Here we go. It's another special edition of the 5050 podcast presented by Physical Athletics. Our proud partner is Physical Athletics. They are applying science to your game. You've heard me say it countless times. The director of strength and conditioning out there, Coach Armando Aguilar, they are doing some cutting edge things, him and his staff. So for those of you local in the Borderland region here in El Paso, you can find them at 2270 Joe Battle Boulevard. You can also find them on all social media platforms at Physical Athletic. That's F-Y-Z-I-C-A-L Athletic, as well as on their website at physicalathletics.com. So Inside Texas High School Soccer Episode 3, we got the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi of uh, Texas High School Soccer here, uh, Coach Rafa. Rafa, how are you, buddy? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, a, a good day today because uh, today was a Clásico and Real Madrid took care of business. The St. Brussels ended up packing, and so we're in first place right now. So I'm just a game pending. So that's so right. Yeah. The uh, the good guys. The, I I saw a stat on that just a little while ago, probably about maybe maybe 45 minutes ago or so. That mm-hmm. I guess this is this is the first time uh, Real has won has swept to the Clasico in 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 season since I think 07, 08. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was a while. I just didn't realize it was that far back. Yeah, so. then Messi, Messi hasn't scored in seven straight Clasico, so uh, he's. I think he's ready to to jump ship to England and go to Man City. Seven straight. That I didn't see that one. That's that I did not see. So awesome. So you know, uh, sorry for the delay, folks. We had uh, some technical difficulties here getting going, but uh, sometimes that's what happens when you go live. But uh, nevertheless, we're here. We're ready to go. We're ready to jump in. Hot start, and we're jumping right into. Uh, we're going to discuss briefly this uh, this past week. Hit on a couple of games, games that we covered directly, games that intrigued us. Uh, of course, we you know we'd be here all day if we wanted to talk. We could literally talk about every single game. But uh, again, uh, we're here. Uh, we're going to look at this past. We're going to review this past week with the regional semifinals that were earlier in the week and the regional finals that took place. For the most part, yesterday, with the exception of we had one match that was pushed back to the earlier this morning, earlier to today, due to weather. Uh, so we'll discuss that as well, and then more importantly, we'll spend we'll spend the bulk of this show actually looking at the uh, the state tournament outlook and kind of what what those matchups, those travel matchups, are going to look like as well. What the logistics are going to present since we are in a a non traditional state tournament format where. Uh, there'll be standalone matches, both the state semifinal and then the teams that win those and advance to the state finals. So we're ready to go. Um, so coach Rafa, let's jump right in. Uh, what are your thoughts this over this past, you know, this crazy week, you know, whether it's going back to Tuesday with, uh, semifinals or even yesterday, uh, with the regional, the regional finals or today's match. There was plenty of surprises, uh, <laughs> from semifinals and even to the finals yesterday. There's a couple teams that we kind of, I know from we did the show on Wednesday that we would thought that we'd probably make it into the state, you know, state final four and someone got knocked off and, you know, we're, they may be, like I said, threats to win the, to the state title. And like I said, there's some interesting matchups going forward now that we're, I think we're looking, I know we're looking forward to seeing, but, because it was another another exciting week, so that's 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 the whole point of this. Is I think I think it's really getting down to the nitty gritty. We're getting some some you know the the teams that we think we're are, are gonna contend, and then there's some 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 stuff that uh, some teams that you know we they didn't think that would be there, but they're there. So right, right. So you know when we look at it, let's just let's just jump into the uh, the. Uh, We'll we'll start with the uh, the girls side. What um, from this past week? What what one or two matchups? You know, regardless of classification, were eye openers for you, or you just you know, at this point, we're yes, there's still kind of sort of some dark some dark horses in there, but mm-hmm. every team is good here. It's just a matter. It's just a variation of who which team is hotter. And then the big thing I think that often gets lost uh, on a lot of people. You know, we've talked about the strength the strength of schedule, if you will, so to speak, because of the strength of the districts. Yeah. But I think what gets lost and what a lot of people realize or remember uh, during uh, during playoff action is matchups, right? Styles, how the styles create the matchups. Um, 
you know, I also have a boxing background. So there's, there's a motto, there's a saying in boxing where styles, styles make fights, right? Uh, this is why for the same, and it's no different in, in any sport, including soccer, where sometimes, you know, you can beat one team, but yet you lose, you lose to another team that beat the team, you know, that lost or beat the team that you lost to or vice versa. So you can't go down that rabbit hole of, yeah, we beat them. We beat them and they, they beat that team. So we should be able to beat this team. And, uh, for those of you that are just confused there, I apologize, (laughs) but, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, matchups, matchups, right. In terms of style of play, which is something that we definitely see here in, uh, across the state of Texas, there's, there's, and that's one of the beauties of the game, right? That it's, it's not cookie cutter. It's not a single style. And you see that in different regions of the state. So, um, so back to what I was, uh, what I was alluding to is on the girls side, what, uh, you know, what couple of matchups, you know, regardless of classification really stood out to you or games results, I should say, stood out to you. I think the one team that's kind of been flying under the radar as far as getting to where they're getting, I know for four a is that, is that Sal- uh, the team from Salina, uh, they're just blowing out teams left and right. They got their two tests. They got a test last night, and I think what I read into that they did actually st- stop the game because of weather. But they, they already had a kind of a good. They had a good lead. You know, they could have probably scored a couple more goals. But that they're the, probably the surprise for the four A girls. I don't think out. You know, there, there's much to talk about. You know, Midlothian Heritage, Stephenville. You know, somewhere in the Metroplex. Those are the probably the top teams in those areas. But this team's been flying under the radar. Like, you know, they're not that a soccer household name and they, they got a shot, you know, they, if they can knock off the, the where they're playing for the region one, you know, they could be a legitimate contender. I mean, they've become a legitimate contender for the state title. So that's one team. Another team that's flying out of the radar that no one really talks about here in the six, a level is, uh, uh, well, actually, back well, you know, six A levels, Houston Memorial. You know, you you think of teams, you know, probably in the New- North Houston area, um, like the Kingwoods, the Kleins, the Friendswood, but no one thought, you know, even though Houston Memorial won their district with, with District Seventeen, they just flew under the radar, and they have actually a pretty good matchup in the state semifinals with another team that that's been dominant, and we've seen. You know, I've seen, you know, firsthand is, is the Vandergriff, uh, the girls from Vandergriff High School from Austin. That's another team that's, you know, kind of flew a little under the radar, but they're peaking at the right time as far as, you know, getting in, you know, knocking off some quality teams and and putting up some, you know, goals. You know, they've taken, they've really flexed their muscles. So those are some teams I, I'm, you know, I've looked at that, you know, you know, there's been the surprises for, for, you know, for these, for these regions, for, for the state overall for this playoffs. Yeah. For me, I think, uh, you know, you talk about it uh, on the, on the girls side. Um, I'm trying to find it here right now. I was just looking at it. Um, you know, you hit on it a little bit in terms of like uh, Salina. I just, I keep hearing the phrase of, well, who have, <laughs> and we kind of joke about it, right? Of, well, who have they really beaten? Who have they really played? And, you know, my, my comment to that is if you're, <laughs> if you're in the state tournament, uh, you're, you're taking care of business somehow. And my, my automatic, my coach response to that is you, you beat the team in front of you, which is all you can do. Right. So, uh, and you don't control that in district play or in tournament play. So, but for me, I think my surprise, it, it comes out of the foray, uh, Cal Allen, you know, yeah. I think, you know, you see, you see Cal Allen there and I think they have, um, uh, is it, uh, the, I think the team that we're talking about, right. Or no, Salado, uh, Salado. Salado. Yeah. They'll have Salado, um, Salado on, uh, which should be on Tuesday. A lot of these matchups folks, I know they do not have, they have not made or, They've probably have already made the arrangements for them or they're finalizing arrangements, but they have not gone public with them yet. So uh, if we have any breaking information on that, we'll release that uh, as we go along. So yeah, I could so see yeah, that game that, probably played in San Antonio. If, if it was a halfway, I, you know, there's a possibility that game could be played in San Antonio. Salado and Kel Allen. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? 
yeah. Yeah, I'm trying but to... I think, I think the benefit for Kyle Allen was dropping down in classification. Mm -hmm. I think that's really helped him. I think because they're, you know, they're one of the smallest 5A schools the last few years, and now they're one of the biggest 4As. So now I think that's helped him out, and, you know, really no one expected him to make that, you know, the run through Region 4 and win it. You know, I think everybody thought Bernie, the Bernie girls were going right. to kind of flex their muscle. And... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, now, so when we look at that, when we look at it on the other side, coach, uh, on the uh, on the boys' side, um, who really stands out to you in terms of results over this past week that that really got your attention? Uh, for the four A level, and I, I know we've talked about this team. I think we've kind of we joked a little bit with them. Uh, that Diamond Hill Jarvis team. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that team, you know, they've beaten some good teams. They beat Milothian, you know, Heritage, which was one of the favorites. Uh, they beat Argyle. That was another That was another favorite there. The, these guys, you know, they're, so whoever, like you mentioned, whoever they put in front, they're taking care of business and they're, they're peaking at the right time. And then now they're going to play Salina, which, which is another. They knocked off a, a state power in Palestine and PKs. You know, we're, we're kind of thinking maybe uh, Diamond, uh, Diamond Hill versus Palestine, and probably that will be the end of the road for, for Diamond Hill. But now the, now this game versus Salina, you know, they're now they're probably the favorites for this. And this could, you know, not to put down Salina for boys, and, you know, because to knock off Palestine says something. You know, those two teams have now an opportunity who probably didn't think would even get into the state title. So, you know, I think those two teams have been a surprise. Um, I know for the 5A level, I think the one the one that's, you know, really wasn't talked about too much was really like, like uh, Valley View, the Valley View boys, mm -hmm. you know, I know they're they've been they've been kind of coming coming around. They've been, they had a good win yesterday, but I know I know they have a tough matchup with with Kingwood with the Kingwood Park. So that should be that's going to be interesting. But then in, in six A, I think the surprise is Allen. Uh, they knocked off East Lake, which yeah. we thought East Lake was going to, you know, get to, you know, they're one of our favorites to get to the final, and but Allen has been just, you know, like I said, they've beat the Prosper, they beat Keller. Um, they also knocked off Grand Prairie, like I said, and even Flower, they even knocked off the state champs, which is Flower Mound. Right. So that's a, that's a good, like I said, that to beat those quality teams, now they, they can come in, you know, going to Rock against Rockwell Heath is probably the favorite to win that and get into the final you know, for the six A final boys. So, like I said, uh, Allen, Allen, like I said, is another another surprise team for for me. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you talk about the El Paso East Lake boys. I, I, a lot of team, a lot of teams, a lot of people, both you and I included, were very high on them. I mean, I had them advancing to the uh, the state title game, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> I know a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, it's it's this weird mix of a week ago, a week ago, a lot of people didn't know, didn't really know, you know, Paso East Lake wasn't really on the radar, and somehow it was a, somehow it was a, uh, it was an upset that they beat South Lake Carroll, right? And then they turned around and even and bested that, those efforts with Byron Nelson, and then really, you know, dominating Byron Nelson, and then and then. Dallas Jesuit on top of that. And then all of a sudden, you know, you fast forward a little over a week later and they, you know, and they fall to Allen in a brutal way. You know, they were, they were up two to one with 15 minutes remaining. Uh, and then they, they lost the lead game win Allen, you know, and uh, you know, kudos to Allen scoring the winning goal with about, I think six minutes left, six or seven minutes left. Uh, so a lot of fight in that Allen group. And, you know, obviously the, you know, the it, win was a factor, but it affected both teams. You know, the Eastlake coach even said that they didn't use that as an excuse. It was just the reality of the situation they found them that they found themselves in. But I just found it interesting that about a, a little over a week ago, 
a lot of people considered it an upset because, and it was an eye opener because first they beat South Lake Carroll and then they dominated Byron Nelson. And then here they are a little over a week later, they lose to Allen. And now that's considered a gigantic upset, which, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yes. East Lake is that good. Uh, but Allen is also, Allen has surprised some people. And of course you're in Allen. You're also talking about the largest high school in the state. You know, so so kudos kudos to them. Uh, did a lot. Did many people see Allen here? Absolutely not. Uh, so they'd be lying to you, I think. Um, but I think the one team that finds themselves. You talk about six eight boys. That one that one squad that's in there that just has plugged away, plugged away, plugged away, and now they're here. And I feel aren't enough people aren't talking about is that Rockwall Heath squad. You know, mm-hmm. um, here they are. They fin and this is keep in mind this is this is a team that finished third in their own district, right? Yeah. So that's uh, that's that's pretty impressive. Finished third in their own district, and uh, you know they're in ten. I think it was ten six a, and uh, finishing uh, behind uh, Tyler Legacy and North uh, North Mesquite. So um, kudos to them. A lot of great stuff uh, from them, and I, I think it's going to be an exciting. It's going to be an exciting matchup for sure. So. That will so you'll have Allen versus Rockwall Heath, you know, a runner up from district uh, from uh, 5 6 A versus the third place team from 10 6 A. How many people w- would guess that, you know, a month ago that we would have this matchup in the uh, the 6 A state semifinal? Uh, they beat some quality teams at Rockwall, too. They knocked off Duncanville, and Duncanville was kind of like one of those favorites for region two. Right. And then they knocked off Klein Forest, who's a, with another one of powerhouse Houston area teams. So yeah, they've gone through the gauntlet as far as you know, no one expecting them to go through. So I, I think Allen Allen shouldn't take them lightly, uh, even though they're a third place team. I, I think in any once you get to the state semifinals, you cannot take anybody lightly. Yeah. They, they're there for a purpose and they're there for a reason because they've beaten quality teams. And so you know, Allen will probably be the favorite, but like I said, don't don't count out Heath. You know, you know, giving them a game and you know, even pulling this one out too. Right. Yeah. So, um, one any one real game, maybe you know, we talked a little bit about earlier in the week. But what about you know, we talk about yesterday, um, and then we'll we'll get to 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 today's mm-hmm. game, our one single final uh, regional final matchup that we had in the, the, in the state earlier today, we'll get to that in a minute. But if you, you talk about the group, the group of games from yesterday, uh, we'll go, maybe go back to the girls side really quick. What, uh, what one game did you feel was like the game, uh, the game in the state, uh, regardless of classification yesterday? Uh, that Wakeland Highland park game. That that's, that, that could be a literally, if they were in two different regions, a, a state championship caliber game. Um, I think Highland Park was acting ranked number one in, in the state, and the Wakeland to come in and knock them off now makes them the favorite. You know, in going into the Grapevine game. So I mean, this is this is I think this is the championship for Wakeland to lose if they can't knock off Grapevine into you know in the final. But you know, going into that bottom bracket. You got two other powerhouses that I'm looking forward to going into this game, which is Friendswood versus Dripping Springs. So you got three, like I said, for for five A girls, you got three qual. Pretty, I'm saying the Great Gravine isn't a quality team, but three really good powerhouse teams that made state, you know, made uh, state appearances, you know, that can win it. But like I said, don't you know? I want to count out Grapevine. You know, they could. Sneak. I mean, they knocked off a good Amarillo team too. So yeah, yeah. So you got yeah. like I said, four, four teams that can anyone can probably win it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we talked a little bit. You mentioned there in uh, the region, region three, region four in five A girls. Set, so it sets us up with a Friendswood uh, Magnolia defeating, or Friendswood. I'm sorry, defeating Mag, defeating Magnolia one zero. And then, of course, Dripping Springs defeating Cedar Park two uh, zero, and that was at Lake Travis, uh, last, Lake Travis High School last mm-hmm. night. Um, yeah, I mean, 
you talk about a dominant force. Dripping Springs is just that entire south, you know, that that entire South Texas, South slash Centex region has been all Dripping Springs. Um, very dominant, and you know, and the big thing too, what I think what gets lost in terms of their dominance with Dripping Springs with um, those mm -hmm. the Lady Tigers is how they have. Um, the amount of clean sheets that you see them putting up, they are a very, mm -hmm. uh, you know, very, very stingy group. And they, they kind of, you know, a lot of that, they get a lot of credit in terms of their finishing ability, but no. it's a very stingy, it's a very stingy defense. They pride themselves on defense. Um, and they, I mean, they made a, they made a, I know you were looking at that one a little bit. Uh, and so was I yesterday that uh, they made a very, a Cedar Park team that had been marching through, right, beating very high quality opponents, uh, and they they made a very good Cedar Park team look pretty pedestrian. Um, what were your what were your thoughts on that Dripping Spring Cedar Park five uh, eight girls matchup that regional I final? Thought, I thought I thought Cedar Park would probably, you know, riding high because like I said, you knocked off McAllen, you knock off Alamo Heights, you knock off. You know, they're being, you know, Bernie champion and like those are quality teams here in region four, but dripping Springs, like I said, they, they were up for the challenge. I think they scored their first goal on a PK and then they just did it. Their, their defense kind of like tightened up and then they finally got that second one that kind of put it away. I mean, honestly, I think what, you know, Cedar Park was kind of get put in a little more fight, but uh, you know, you know, kudos to dripping Springs on how they play defense. You know, that's, you know that the slogan "Defense wins championships." Well, that that's a proof right there with all those clean sheets they have. And you know, I, I think friends would better kind of be aware with it, be be ready for this game. I mean, because this is a great matchup. This could also yeah. be a state championship game too. But friends mm -hmm. would need to really be aware. You know, they just got by a quality Magnolia team by one goal. You know, this goal, this game right here, a one-zero game will win you. Could win you the. Uh, help yeah. you advance to the state championship. So, you know, if that yeah. goes to, you know, and I would give that advantage to a Dripping Springs, a low scoring game is going to be a drip, uh, Dripping Springs will be the advantage because I think they have the better defense. But if it goes to a higher scoring game, I think it might be an advantage to go to friends with. Yeah. And, you know, one thing on a side note, one of the things that I kind of wanted to uh, highlight is, um, Wanted to give a quick shout out to that uh, the Dripping the Dripping Springs Soccer Program Booster Club. They are incredible, top, absolutely top notch in support of both the boys, uh, their boys and girls soccer programs. And they are, <clears throat> they are. I've said it before, but they are that that booster club. Those supporters that they have, be, and and of course their booster club for Dripping Springs. They are, you know arguably the best in the business in terms of, so for other high schools, other programs, uh, especially these newer programs, right? These newer high schools, younger high schools, in terms of you want to look at how to be able to really uh, support uh, support your programs, um, Dripping Springs is, is, is the one to look at. That is the school to look at. Why does that matter? Is because I think you can see that, that has a there's a direct parallel there and it translates on the field. Um, you know, you're having the Dripping Spring boys, you know, uh, falling out, I believe, in the regional semifinal, right? But, and then the, here, the Dripping Spring girls, they kind of been going through, they're just one of those groups that look like they are, they're, they're on a mission to get here to the state tournament, but the mm -hmm. ultimate mission now is to, is to seal the deal, right? So, uh, so that matters. That was kind of a, kind of a shout out and a plug, something that I wanted to mention, because uh, I've been very, I've been nothing but impressed in terms of how on the spot they are in terms of just, you know, their support, their social media, uh, their social media network, networking, how they do things, how they operate things, very professional, very organized, and very consistent. That's the big one. So shout out to, uh, to the, obviously the Dripping Springs, uh, both programs, but especially to the, the Booster Club uh, as well. So um, so there, just a little something that I wanted to mention since we had the, while we were discussing them. So, all right, coach. So, um, you know, we talked about the other game I, that I kind of wanted to mention, cause I know you were really deep in discussing this one was the, uh, let's see if I can find it here was the, 
the uh, Valley View Porter 5A boys game, that regional final. Um, what were I know you were covering that one. What were your what were your thoughts walking away from that? I know Valley View won that final score of two to one, and mm-hmm. I believe I think I think that was tied up one one along the way before Valley View finally pulled away, right? Yeah. What were your, what were your thoughts on that one? That that game real surprised me from what Valley View did to Southwest the, on the regional semifinal game, and I, I think um, Porter came in with a very good game plan. And, and and not enough credit for them. Their defense they have a really good defense, even though they give up two goals. But yeah. they they really dominated that whole game, to believe it or not. And and I thought maybe Valerie would, you know, kind of flex his muscle a bit. It was an all all, you know, Porter. They were touching the ball better, better possession. Uh, you can tell Valerie was kind of out of sync. And I think they're. I think they got lucky escaping and going to the regional, you know, re, uh, to the state semifinals. And I know they struck first on a, on a PK, and then uh, probably this. Hopefully, they send their, their the the goal, the second goal video to ESPN. Um, <laughs> the Porter player, I forgot his name. He scored a. He had at least be fifty five yards out. Just this, he just sent a rocket on a free kick and. So was that like um, was that a Harlan esque? That was a uh, way a Harlan esque goal, and I, I yeah. think also I think the goalkeeper, uh, I think he was caught off guard thinking that nah, I don't think he's gonna reach it, and it went over his head, and so I, I think the next time when they had free kicks, he was kind of backing up closer to to his line. So, but right. it was a great game. But it was back and forth. I think even during regulation because they went to overtime, mm-hmm. regulation. You know, Porter had some chances to kind of put this away. They just just were unlucky, and then finally, in the first overtime, uh, their the Pablo Torre was able to, you know, he yeah. was getting a lot of attention. He he was able to sneak, you know, get away, and three porters, three porter defenders came on him, and he let one slip out to a teammate, and he got and they got the shot in. So that was that was the difference. But the, you know, Porter, uh, I said Valview had to hold on and. You know, kudos to them. And like I said, I think, you know, look out for Porter. I think they're a very young team. I think next year they might be the one that, you know, they'll get over this. You know, I, I think this one stings for them. But I think they're going to probably be a legitimate threat next year as far as you know, all that experience they're bringing back. But like I said, Porter, like I said, Valley View, I think they need to fix some things because they're going to run into a very quality Kingwood Park team that, well, some of the stuff they did on, you know, you, yes, last night, it's not going to work on them with this Kingwood team. Yeah. 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 I guess uh good old Pablo Torres slipping since he's not, he didn't score five goals again. So I don't know. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to start him going forward. Right. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an amazing, amazing kid. He's an amazing kid. Um, awesome. Okay. So, uh, so last, last game that we kind of wanted to discuss, I, I was entrenched in this one throughout, uh, giving kind of updates to multiple people, getting kind of text messages, a few phone calls along the way from people that weren't able to watch it and from people that were watching it. Um, so, And that is our Region 4 6A boys um, final that took place uh, last night. At, they're at uh, Dripping Springs High School between uh, Le- the Lake Travis Cavaliers and the uh, Lee San Antonio Lee Volunteers. Um, so before I kind of dive into it and kind of give a little bit of my take on it, what was when you piece things together, Coach? Uh, and we will kind of get into the controversial call later. Um, what was your your take on it? I think Lee finally got the monkey off their back in regards to the PKs. I think going into the, the PKs, I think 2019 kind of flashed through before their eyes. And I know you were giving me updates when they first, when they missed the first one. I'm like, ah, looks like a repeat of 2019. And um, someone must have been, been lighting candles last night for them and, and, it, and led a lot of prayers and, they're able to pull pull off. I got to see the the la, the last shot, the last goal they scored on the PKs to to seal it. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. and that I think from that game, I think 
moving on forward, I think it, it's a confidence booster because, it, you know, I think they erase, like I said, a lot of that, that bad taste in their mouth from 2019 for losing the state championship PKs. You know, that's not the way you want to lose. And I think for this, they learn from, they learn from that. They're able to get through. I know there was some luck and some little controversy, but it's a booster for them knowing that if they have to go to PKs again, they can, you know, they can win it, you know, if they need to. Yeah. You know, the, uh, you know, it was, <laughs> it was kind of, it was an interesting dynamic when they, cause well, first of all, you know, we talk about the match, the match was, the match was interesting because it was kind of a, it was a very even, very open, but yet still a very defensive, uh, defensive uh, matchup. Um, neither team could really exclusively impose their will. That first half, um, especially probably, I'd say maybe the last ten to fifteen minutes, you kind of got the feeling that Lee was figuring some things out. You know, they they went from being able to get one shot, one shot off, to I think in the time frame off of a goal kick, the one shot that hit the right post, another shot that uh, sailed just uh, slightly above the uh, the crossbar. So, so they and then another shot that sailed wide right. So in those last ten to fifteen minutes, you kind of got the impression that Lee was starting to figure out Lake Travis a little bit, but they couldn't capitalize. And these are two teams. Normally, these are I mean, these are two exceptionally well coached, exceptionally well, you know, exceptionally talented programs, you know, nationally ranked programs. And, you know, you could tell that a lot of their strengths, they were kind of, they were being, they were canceling each other out, right. Um, Because of the game, the game plan, the strategy for both teams, which, which you kind of expected. So as it kind of went to halftime, as we entered halftime, you kind of got the impression that Lee you know, Lee didn't take advantage of their opportunities, right? And then that second half, immediately, like, Lake Travis came out hot. Lake Travis came out, you bought those first, I'd say, 10, 10 to 12 minutes or so. Lake Travis was just, you know, they were putting their passes together cleanly. They were getting in. They get a goal. Lee just – and Lee looked, Lee looked, you know, for lack of better words, just kind of a little flat to start, then kind of stunned by that goal. Um, so – um, so Lake Travis, I think could have Lake Travis could have had another opportunity to probably get a second one in possibly. Um, but then, cause what you started to see after that first goal from Lee what, or from Lake Travis, sorry, it was Lee, Lee took, it took Lee probably about another 10 minutes after that, 10 to 12 minutes. Cause you kind of got the impression that now Lee was trying to get it all back in every single play. Right. Um, and then what ultimately ended up happening was, they kind of reverted back to the type of lead team that I know I've, I've mentioned on this show and I've mentioned to you, both to you and Harry, that they finally started to settle back down, right? They started to settle back down, you know, their combination play, uh, trying to find, trying to find the grooves, trying to find the splits, trying to break the lines. Um, and then they finally got through. They finally, finally scored the, uh, you know, the equalizer with, I think about, I don't know if it was maybe 15, 16 minutes, 17 minutes left somewhere in there. And then from there, it was just, it was just a, it was just a heavyweight bout back and forth. Yeah. Uh, both teams had opportunities both in, you know, end of regulation. And uh, you know, by the time you get into the, uh, the extra time periods, the two extra time periods, it's, you know, at that point, it's not going to be pretty soccer, you know, both, both the legs are heavy. They, you know, neither team could capitalize and then, and then you get to penalties. Um, and then, you know, when you got to penalties, you just got the impression that, you know, it was, <laughs> it just seemed like it's like with Lee, it was like they get their first, they get their first shot off and they miss. Right. And it was just like, uh, here we go again. Right. Uh, so they miss, um, they miss their first one and then make their next two. And whereas with uh, Lake Travis, it was the opposite. They made their first one, I think. And then, missed their next two. Um, but the controversial call kind of came into play on the, uh, the penalty kick that was missed or that was not missed, but saved by, uh, the, uh, Lake Travis keeper. And then the referee referee blows the whistle, calls him off the line. 
so then they they initiate the restart, and then of course the uh, the Lee the Lee shooter is able to capitalize and finish, and that was kind of what shifted the momentum right in the middle of the uh, you know of the of the penalty shootout. So um, you know, and so we discussed that today, and there was a breakdown of that, a uh, pretty good breakdown in terms of okay, was he was he or wasn't he off this line? I know you did a little bit of a kind of a you know, a little analytics there, a little really extensive mechanic, mechanical breakdown. What were your thoughts on that when you looked through that? You looked through that film, you looked at it a little closer today. Yeah, I zoomed in and saw, and I did see a foot, but then just the angle of it, the video doesn't really tell, you know, what give it. I know the, per the person who posted it, you know, they weren't happy about it, but. I think I think where the where the line zone was, I think me maybe he had a better view, you know, because I really kind of slowed it down to see if he did leave his his line and mm -hmm. you know just well the, by the time the person kicked the ball, that's that's one thing I think my biggest complaint about the whole thing is that's why I don't like playing soccer games at football stadiums, at, at football fields that are painted like that. You want to play yeah. play play at a real soccer stadium, you know. That way, you can really see the line, you know. Yeah. You know, and and you know, like I said, uh, you know, maybe the assistant referee, you know, he's got a better viewpoint than we are than uh, than on the video. So he must have seen something that that it raised, made him raise the flag. And he, hey, you know, we had to re-kick it again. I mean, I mean, Lake Travis, like I say, Lake Travis did get into the regional final on a. On a bad call to against Harlan on the obvious obvious uh, offsides that was like four or five yards away. So I, I don't know. You can say karma sometimes. You, blame, the, you blaming the it on the gods. soccer the soccer karma gods? Is that the what you? Karma, yeah, the soccer karma gods. You know, hey, you know, we all lost games because of controversial. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, there was one I remember why we lost we lost to a lead to a shootout and in the overtime we. We watched the video. We scored a goal that went in, and the referee didn't count it. They were like, they could have got us into the regional, you know, win the next game, get us to the regional tournament. But, you know, it's that thing, those things happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, like you mentioned, because that really did change the momentum. And I think that gave Lee a little bit confidence because I think if that if that stays as far as a block kick, I think Lake Travis more likely would have won the, the shootout. So, I guess – that night, the soccer gods were with Lee, and and I think that helps them out going moving forward on if they go into any any penalty kicks, whether they're in the yeah. same semifinal or the final. Yeah, because I think the the truth of it is, is at that point when that call was made, I think it was pretty clear to say that Lee or not Lee, I'm sorry, Lake Travis, Lake Travis had the advantage. You know, Lake Travis had the momentum at that moment. You know, so. Um, and yeah, you know, playing playing a little devil's advocate with you here, I think that also you, I think you can also say that, yeah, I mean, you're right in terms of those those goals. The goals are sitting, you know, you have a, you know, you have a soccer goal line that's running right across a football painted end zone, which can be very hard to see, very hard to see. And you know, why I say playing devil's advocate with you is I think you know the the footage that you showed me, just letting our mm -hmm. listeners know. You had to really stop it. You had to really break it down. You had to really look at it slow motion. So, you know, and if you and, and I know you know what you're looking for, but I could just I don't know. I think that if you had to stop it and slow it that much, it, I find it hard. I find it difficult that a, that an official can see that, you know, and and obviously, and that foot that they're arguing, I guess, that came off off the yeah. line is. You know the official. You know the li the linesman on the is on the opposite side of that foot. You know, so I don't know. I think if it's that close in a regional final matchup, that's gonna penalties. I I don't know. I don't know if you make that call. You know, without without being one hundred percent certain. So so I don't know. I don't know. I I think I think that's tough to say. I think that's a tough call for sure. You know, and for our listeners, I think that. You know that the rule the rule states is that one that one foot has to remain, you know, in contact with the line at least mm -hmm. up until the, until the point that the shooter makes impact with the ball. So, and I think in that clip that you know it's a clip. Obviously, it's a video clip. 
but from what I see, I thought I thought one foot was <laughs> was in contact with the line at least at that moment. So I don't know. So, and also you know, with that said too, you know, uh, kudos to the you know the Lee uh, the Lee shooter there because that takes that takes a lot of courage to to be able to step back in there uh, and take a second you know second attempt after you saw what just happened in the first one and then he, he and he capitalizes. So kudos kudos to him. And then, of course, and then that's what happened. You know, you see Lee takes the advantage. Lake Travis, you know, Lake Travis has a couple of misses and Lee finishes it off. And now they are in the uh, now they're back in the, you know, back in the state tournament uh, where yeah. they la where they last were two years ago. So. Um, so, yeah, I think a bit of. Yeah, I think when you look back on it overall, some redemption, the monkey off the back. That's a perfect analogy, right, in terms of for for Lee uh, as far as. So now they know that they can win in penalties because my understanding is, is this was the first time that they had been in penalties since that state championship matchup yeah. right back in 2019. So that's, that's a big confidence booster, I think. But I, I think even that, I know some, there were some complaints about, well, you know, our district doesn't have penalties for over for tied games and this and that, but you know, that itself, you know, you, as a coach, you know, you should focus on, you know, practicing that because you never know what situation, even if you have a penalty kick during the game, you know, you got to have quality players that can put it, put it in the net or even your goalkeeper know how to, to be able to anticipate the block in the shot. So, you know, I know I've heard that excuse in the past and stuff, and, and even from other teams too, but, you know, you, when you practice, you got to know how to finish, and, and your goalkeepers know has got to be able to know how to block shots. That's right. that, that's yeah. soccer one on one as far as technique and and your basics and so forth. So um, we'll see we'll see what happens. Like I say, if this situation comes again as far as PKs, um, I know with high school football they had the uh, the state championships. They had the instant replay. Will they bring in the VAR for the for for the state <laughs> final there in Georgetown? Uh, yeah. I mean, if they do it for football, they, I, mean, I don't see why they can't do it for for the you know for soccer. That's, uh, that's asking you know? to uh, that's asking to open up Pandora's box. That's a yeah. whole other. That's a serious can of worms. But yeah, it'd be interesting. It's a you know, and the thing too, you know, is as a coach, you know, there's different there's different discussions, there's different arguments, there's different conversations when it comes to penalties in terms of your district district play. Um, mm -hmm. or plane versus points, you know, uh, a point system versus penalties. And I think you can do both. I think that's kind of, I think you can have the best of both worlds. You just reward an outright victory versus a penalty victory, I guess, differently. Right. But, yeah. you know, yeah, I think you, you obviously have your coaches that argue that, and, and it's true. It's like, cause you can only really duplicate, you can't really duplicate a tension, you know, a pressure filled penalty, you know, live situation in, in training as much as you can try, you know, you can try, I've been doing it for a long time and, um, and it's tough, but I mean, the one thing obviously at a minimum is yes, you should, you need to practice them so you can find out cause you need to figure out your rotation in terms of your shooters, right? right. Who are your shooters? Um, and you also need to be able to get your, your keeper or keepers, you know, some serious looks and some, uh, so this way they get in that habit as well. Um, uh I think one Go thing ahead. I can recommend is like analytics being, a, like I said, me being a goalkeeping coach, you know, one thing I do used to tell my keepers and is just looking at the mechanics of the kicker, you know, and, and I would, we would practice those, you know, you know, after each, after each practice, just to get, just to, I want to see what type of, for me personally to learn a, a, a player's analytics and mechanics and you know, and I'm I was able to kind of like even you know to figure out styles like as far as how, you know angling and stuff, and, and that's something I would tell my keepers. You know, if he angles this way, this is where the shot's gonna be at. This, is, and right. to me, it's worked for me for some of my keepers. It's worked. You know, I don't know how much time a lot of the coaches may have this, but that's something I you know, you know, really kind of look into is like, you know, even even in the watching games in the pros or colleges, I'll watch and see how someone set, sets up and I, how they angle shots and all that, what the body language is. And that's, you know, it, it takes time, but 
And um, for me, like I said, being a goalkeeping coach, I think I've learned, you know, techniques and, and uh, you know, ways. Like one, one of my, the one I love watching is is, uh, is Seiko Ramos when he kicks PKs. He's probably mm-hmm. the most unpredictable one, you know, as far as – but I'm starting to see – kind of figure him out how he takes him. And then like, like with Virgo keeper, this is what you need to look for when he's trying to do that. You know, he's, he's like that one player as far as how to make probably the one that does the kick and penalty kicks, you know, really unpredictable, but you know, I'm starting to see little, little things that, okay, this is where he's going to go to and this and that. So, you know, if coaches can really, you know, focus on that, I think that'll help, especially the goalkeepers and even also their kickers too, you know, Mm-hmm. You know, just the little things that you know that will help you. Even like when they had the thirty-five yard shootout, I did analytics on that. You know, I would tell my keepers count the seconds in your in your head. Once you get to three, you know he's gonna shoot, unless he shoots right away, and tries to chip it over you. Right. You know, right. it's just those little things. So hopefully, like I said, I think for coaches out there, I think you know if you can really kind of take the time when you have a chance, you know, work on those things, and I think that'll really help out your team when you come into those situations. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's interesting too. You know the, you know one of the things. Here's a little tidbit. Here's a little coach's secret, I guess. One one of the um, training methods that I've done when um, it's kind of a dual purpose uh, activity where when when I'm practicing with some of my, you know, some of my squads in the past, whenever we're practicing penalties, I don't always do this. I pick certain, I pick certain moments, certain times to do this is I have the, the shooter, the shooter actually tells the goalkeeper where they intend to go. Right. So where exactly they're going. So it puts a, it ratchets up a little bit more pressure on that shooter where now they have to be textbook. They have to be deadly accurate. And that goalkeeper Mm -hmm. has, that goalkeeper has even less pressure and even less of an excuse not to stop it. Right. And so, um, so it, it's dual purpose and I think, and it's worked really well. It's worked because now you have this little gamesmanship and a little bit more that little activity, it kind of can create, you know, a little bit more of that, that real life pressure that you're going to get in a game, right. Where they have to be crafty. The, the shooter has to be a little bit more crafty and, you know, the, the goalkeeper has to remain disciplined and still remain reactive versus proactive and try to beat, you know, try to beat them up. So, uh, so yeah, really good stuff. So, um, all right, coach. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead. We're going to transition here now. We're going to, so we're going to look ahead. We're going to look at our state tournament outlook. Uh, we're going to go through the girls first. We'll go for four, a five, a six, a, and then we'll jump over to the boys. We'll kind of have our, our prognostications in terms of, what we what we anticipate, what we expect to happen. So, all right. So in uh, so girls for a region one versus region uh, region one champion versus region two champion. Uh, this game is if this is correct, this is slated for Tuesday, April thirteenth, five thirty p.m. at South Lake uh, South Lake Dragon Stadium. That's uh, Midlothian Heritage versus uh, Salina. Uh, interest that's a Salina's gonna definitely uh they can say they've played they've seriously played somebody after this game uh what are your yeah. thoughts on that one well Milokina has their hands full because they got a Salina's got a, a four that has scored over 100 goals this season and I think that's who I'm not saying that they depend on her a lot she's just been really racking up the goals like, as you can say for the last few games so Salina is going to have to, I mean, Heritage is going to have to find a way. All right. We're going to make Salina beat, beat them with another, with someone else. You know, I'm sure they're, that they're going to have a build a game plan. This is going to be, a, like I said, this is going to be a close game. You know, if yeah. they don't, if they can't contain uh, their, the star forward from Salina, Salina is going to go through. That's like I said, she's been going buck wall on, you know, the last few five games and, but I'm gonna give the edge to Heritage. Like I said, they, you know, they, they're battle. Like I'm not saying both teams are not battle tested, but I think they have a little edge, you know, going into this. You know, you know, I think Region One's just, you know, I think is a little t- bit tougher. But this is gonna come down to, you know, who's got the better defense. And I think Heritage might, you know, I think we'll pull this off. It'll be a close one. I can say like a maybe like a maybe three three to one or. Or two to one game. 
Yeah, and Solano, you're talking about quite possibly the name escapes me right now. I just mm -hmm. had it a little while ago. We were talking about her, um, but uh, you're probably talking about the hottest player in the tournament, and mm -hmm. also she's you know broke the state record for goal. You know, uh, I think goals in a season. So well, she was a team uh, manager last year too. <laughs> yeah, what a story! What an incredible story! Uh, so okay, so we look over the other side, the other side of the bracket, coach. Um, the region three versus region four champion here, uh, Salado versus the, uh, the Cinderella story here in Cal Allen. Uh, what are your, what are your thoughts? And, um, and these are also the, they are the, this, you know, I say Cinderella story, but mm -hmm. Cal Allen did win their district. They're out of, uh, 29, four a versus Salado, the, uh, champion out of, uh, out of 18, four a, what are your thoughts on this one? This this is an itch. This could be. This is a toss up game. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, this is gonna depend on where they play at too. And I think by if they are playing on a neutral site, I mean that can. I guess from Corpus, from the Killeen area, I think this game could probably is probably gonna be played here in San Antonio. Um, hopefully it is because maybe an opportunity to go check it out. Uh, I'm gonna go with Cal Allen. I, I just have a good wow. feeling that. I mean, if you knock off Bernie and you knock off Wimberley, I think those are quality, more quality teams than maybe Bay City and Lorena. It's just, yeah. just my opinion on that. And, and you know, because we all thought Bernie girls were going to go through and probably win, win, win yeah. the state championship. When you beat those two quality teams, and I think they're a lot more quality than what it is in region, I think in region two and region three, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the Kyle and gross. So will be, like I said, this is another close game, but I think Kyle is going to pull this one off. All right. So that sets up Cal Allen. Who did you pick in the other one? Was that, was it heritage or Salina? Yeah. Uh, Salina? I picked heritage. Heritage. Okay. Yeah. So that sets up uh Midlothian heritage versus Cal Allen in the four, a final. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think that's when the, uh, I think, Midnight strikes for Cinderella. I think Heritage are probably going to win. They'll be like I said, another good game, but I think Heritage pulls this one off. Uh, like I said, another Metroplex team, quality. Uh, this should win the. This should win the state championship for four girls. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So we move on to five A region one and two girls. Uh, the uh, the uh, district champion out of six out of uh, district six, six, a and grapevine versus the runner up out of nine, six, a Wakeland. Um, what are in the, the uh, one of the, the first, uh, the region one versus region two semifinal state semifinal. What do you think? This is, this is, gonna be, this is an interesting game. Cause like I said, no one's really said anything much about grapevine. You know, they've just been under the radar. Said so they knocked off a good Amarillo team. Um, I think they also not. Oh, who else have they knocked off? I'm trying to see it, looking, kind of looking through their little, their little run. Um, they knocked off a Wiley team. Uh, the quality win was knocking off Wichita Falls Rider, which is yeah. one of the favorites from region region one for the girls. So this will be an interesting game. But look what Wakeland did. They knocked off the number one team in the state, which was yeah. Highland Park. Which I think I think we had picked them you know, Wednesday as far as, you know, going through to the final. But I think Wayland's got the momentum now. Uh, and I think Wakeland's going to beat Grapevine and go on to the final. So Wakeland advances. And then in the other one, we have uh, a tremendous matchup. Uh, so this is going to be – so who can impose their will more? You're going to have – so the – all right, Region 3 and Region 4 champions here in Friendswood versus Dripping Springs, who are also the district champions out of uh, 22-5A and 26-5A. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, this 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 is a state championship caliber game. Uh, I mean, you, you can tell just going into this, it could this could have been like the – had maybe we had a cross – you know, like normally the normal state semifinal, state semifinal games, it could, this could have been the final here. I'm going to go, like I said, kind of looking at the teams. I think, different. like I said, the difference is that Jipper Springs defense. I think difference wins championships. So I'm going to go, I think Jipper Springs wins this one a close one, maybe to, like a two to one. 
um, over over Friendswood. I know Friendswood's got the the tradition, winning you know going to the state finals, winning state final. But I think this is a breakthrough for Dripping Springs. I think they get to the final. All right, so that puts us in our final. So our five A final, five uh, A girls final. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think Wakeland's going to pull this one off. I think they'll knock off Dripping. Like I said, this will be another great game. Uh, but I think Wakeland maybe have have a little too much firepower, and then also, I think they they I think they've come out of a little more brutal region with more I think a little better quality teams, you know, especially from that Metroplex area, and also that Northeast Texas area. So uh, I think I think Wakeland's going to pull this one. The Wakeland girls are going to pull this one off and win the state championship. And the girls' side, I'm trying to recall, they have what is it? Is it two state titles? Is it? I think so. Two, I think. I, I I mix it up a lot with with the boys. That's why with their boys side. That's why. Um, yeah, that would be a dynamite matchup. Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, I can easily see that playing out, but I think I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride that Dripping Springs bus all the way home. I think. Uh, I've just, you know, the the culture and that the biggest thing I noticed with Dripping Springs that I really like in them is mm -hmm. yes, they're talented. They're technical. They're tactical. They're very smart. They're really good decision. They're a really good decision making group. But when all of that, or when things aren't maybe necessarily quite going their way, is that they're tough. You know, they're tough. They're just they can impose their will. Uh, so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to watch that, and hopefully that's the case. So we'll see. So all right, coach. We move on to six A. So Region One versus Region Two champion. And now this is this is the region that's really got me excited because I think it's going to, you know, if all goes as planned, I think for me, it's going to put the ultimate matchup that I want to that I want to see. Uh, that was what we thought was going to happen on the 6A boys side also, but that's not mm -hmm. going to happen. But I think this I think this still has a chance to happen. So um, Flower Mound, Flower Mound han handles Marcus, three, a very good Marcus group, 3-0. Uh, uh, and now they will take on another. You talk about another another program with just with serious pedigree in the Woodlands. So Flower Mound versus the Woodlands Region One versus Region Two champion. These are both also district champions out of six six A and thirteen six A. What are your thoughts, Coach? Well, looking at the games, like I said, Flower Mound. I mean, to put through the blank Marcus, which is a rivalry game, right? You know, for the district. I think that, like I said, they're the clear, probably the clear favorites going to take to win it all. Uh, Woodland struggled with, with Lake Ridge, you know, Wake Ridge, Wake, Lake Ridge out of Mansfield, another uh, Metroplex team. So now they're going against probably the the, the top Metroplex team for the six uh, A girls soccer. So uh, Woodland has their game, their their hands full, but I'm gonna go with Flower Mound. Like I said, they they're they're on a mission and. And this should, this will be, like I said, it'll be a hard fought game, but I think eventually Flower Mound's going to win this game. Yeah, I see Flower Mound here. They are, they are a team. I can't call it house money because it's not like they're a dark horse or a Cinderella, but they are just, they're in, rein, they're reinvigorated with this certain level of confidence after that Prosper, right? After mm -hmm. knocking off Prosper, which I think should, you know, just, and it's no disrespect to Flower Mound, but I think people were just, you know, kind of already anointing Prosper, right? Putting them on a different level and Flower Mound, you know, takes them out. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, I, I think it's, it's theirs, really theirs to lose. So, and they're playing exceptionally well with a ton of confidence right now at the right time. So, all right, coach, we look at the other side of, uh, 6A regions three and four. We have our uh, regions three and four champions in Memorial and Vandegrift. So Memorial being the uh, district champion out of uh, 176A and Vandy being the uh, runner up out of 256A. What are your thoughts on that one? Well, go, looking into Memorial, really, Memorial's not really a household name as far as, you know, 6A girls soccer. You think of the Katie teams like Tompkins or Cinco Ranch or 
or Taylor um, Belair, but they've taken whoever team they've been facing, they put in front of, they took, they've been taking care of business. And an interesting matchup with the Region 4, which I thought maybe Ron Rock, because they had beaten, you know, they, they have you know, won the series over Vandegrift. But Van, and then Vandergriff came into that game with a one of the best defenders on from a red card. Yeah. So and then for them to put four goals on Ron Rock, I think they're picking at the right time. I've seen them Vandergriff play. They're very physical. They touch the ball up, very technical. Um, they got a couple forwards that can really snap that ball into the net. Um, especially love that their their center forward, very physical, put knocks you around. Loves, knows how to play the ball behind, you know, with her with her back turn. Uh, this is a good matchup. I, I don't know where this game is going to be played at. Um, I don't think they've shown where that game's going to play at. Um, I don't think it's going to be played in the in the Austin area. This is probably going to probably be, I could say, probably maybe like in College Station or some or somewhere somewhere around there, Brenham. Uh, but I, I'm going to go with Vandergriff. I think Vandergriff. Like I said, I think their physical play is going to help. I think you know I'm not too familiar with Memorial, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Vandergriff going into the final. Yeah, I'm trying to look that up right now. See if there's any updated. I don't see any updated information as to where uh, where that'll that'll be played at least at this time. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you you know, you have a Round Rock. You know, they face each other for a third time this year, Vandergriff and Round Rock in the regional final. And, uh, you know, and Vandegrift takes care of business. You know, they were, they were short, they were short and they still take care of business. So, you know, this, I think I see Vandegrift going into this with, uh, a ton of also this, uh, them and flower mound, just a ton of confidence, a ton of momentum and, uh, really, you know, peaking at the right time, which you often hear about in tournament play is so, so critical. Um, and this is why you can often to sign oftentimes see, a runner up from a district, a third place team from a district, and even on occasion, a fourth place team uh, make make a deep run, make a run to a regional final or even get into the state tournament. So I think, yeah, I can see I can see Vandergrift uh, uh, advancing here and which gives me the uh, kind of at this point where we're at and how things have played out the kind of the dream matchup, I think in six, a six, a girls, Vandegrift and flower mound. Uh, I would love to absolutely watch that game. What, uh, what are your thoughts on that for a final? That's going to be a really good, like I said, that's a great matchup. Um, Vandegrift will be in there kind of like close to their backyard. Cause this will be in the Austin area game. So I'm sure they'll have the fan support. Um, but just something about flower mound. I mean, you know, to knock off Prosper and a couple of these other teams, Marcus. I, I think the level of play is a little bit higher, I think, in the Dallas area than maybe all down here in the Austin, San Antonio area. So I'm going to go. Uh, I think eventually, like I said, they'll, this is going to be a, a – like I said, it will be a classic, but eventually the winner's going to – like I said, it's going to come down to, like, Flower Mounds. This is more – I think more ready and more on the mission to win this. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get the advantage of Fire on, on that final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that. That's a tough one. That'll definitely be uh, an interesting. I think that'll be that. I I can that at a minimum. I think has a uh, game that might be destined for uh, for overtime, uh, if not possibly penalties. But yeah, I think slight edge maybe to uh, Flower Mound there. Just just the way they're playing. Uh, when you stack them up against Vandegrift. But yeah, I think ultimately that's why you play the game. But that I think that has all the makings for an absolute classic. So yeah, I agree. So, all right, coach. So now we're going to go ahead. We're going to step over to the boys. Uh, starting with 4A regions one and two are uh, your boys there. Diamond Hill Jarvis, all right, versus uh, versus Salina. Uh, and the region one and region two champions Diamond Hill Jarvis being the uh, champion out of seven four A versus Salina being the runner up out of eleven four A. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, this is gonna be a good matchup. Uh, Salina is gonna probably be riding high, knocking off Palestine because I know on our Wednesday show we kind of thought Palestine would get through, 
and get to right. the final. More likely, probably, like I said, probably be the you know be the favorite to win it. But Salina found a way, and it was scoreless, and they end up winning on penalty kicks. And that's the heart heartbreaking way to lose, you know, end your season that way. But Diamond Hills Jarvis is like I said, has been under the radar the whole year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They knocked they knocked off Argyle, they knocked off Midlothian Heritage. You know, they beat a really tough Mineral Wells team. So this is a good another good matchup. Um I think I think Diamond Hills is probably have the moment when I'm going into even though they like I said Sion knocked off Palestine. I think Diamond Hills is. I think they're going to win this game. Uh, it'll be a close one, but I think Diamond Hills advances to. I think probably the first state championship game. Yeah, that'd be something else, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? Mm -hmm. All right, and then when we look at the other side of the bracket, uh, Region Three and Four champions, you have uh, Hargrave, who is the runner-up out of twenty-two-four uh, A, and then the District twenty-six A champion or four A twenty-six four A champion in Bernie. Kind of the. I think that's the one school that everybody expected to see here was probably Bernie. Mm -hmm. um, so up to now, they've they've taken care of business. And this game is scheduled for uh, Tuesday, April 13th, uh, 7 p.m. at uh, Columbus High School there in Columbus. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, with a Splendora and Hargrave, I, I really thought Splendora would win. I did see highlights on that game. It was back and forth, and then finally Hargrave was able to capitalize on a mistake. I think it was like, this game went into overtime, and they were able to win, pull that off. Uh, Bernie, you know, Bernie and Hidalgo, I know we talked about this on Wednesday. I thought Hidalgo would give him a game. I know the, the well, one, of the, one of the guys we had on from the Valley did mention that they're a very young team with a bunch of freshmen on that, but, you know, they have a really good coach that's won a state championship. I think, okay, by this time, they should have some experience and be have the right. confidence to go in. But, you know, Bernie came in, they didn't mess around, and that was a shocker there to, to, to put seven goals on a regional final going into this one. So yeah. Hargrave, Hargrave has their hands full with Bernie, uh, but I'm going to go with Bernie. I think Bernie, like I said, another tough game, but Bernie will advance and get into the final, I think, with, with Diamond Hills. All right. So that puts – uh, that puts the uh, the perennial favorite in Bernie versus uh, versus your boys, uh, Diamond Hill Jarvis, uh, for it all, uh, for a boys. What do you think? This is, this is a, co a contrast of two different styles, you know, two st different styles of play. I think the team that can impose their style of play is going to win this game. And, and, and I've seen these type of matchups in the past. Um, I, I think Bernie, I think they're more a little more technical and I like guess I learned a lot, a little bit more about them. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they actually had a, they actually played Lee this year and they actually had a lead, uh, a lead against Lee. And so Lee kind of got their things together mm -hmm. and end up winning, you know, winning a close one. I think it was like three to one. So like I said, Bernie, if Bernie can keep up with a team like Lee and even have a lead on them. I think I think that tells you something there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna give the edge to Bernie. I think Bernie's gonna pull this, you know, win this. But it's gonna come down to whose style of play is gonna dominate. If Diamond Hills does their style of play, I think they'll, they'll they can be they they could win this one. But Bernie's gonna have to flex their muscle, and I think they they did that with Valgo, you know, try to get away from kind of the maybe the long ball style, the their possession game really. It really showed on that on that game uh, in Corpus. So I'm going to give Bernie Bernie the edge on winning the state championship. All right. So awesome. So slight edge to Bernie there. Um, so we got one here. So uh, updated information. I guess that's hasn't really gone public, but we got some breaking info here. Uh, thanks to a great source. So that. Uh, Going, we talk about that Vandergrift, Vandergrift uh, girls uh, mm -hmm. matchup will take place. Um, let me pull that back up really quick here. Make sure that Vandergrift Memorial uh, game will take place Tuesday, April 13th, 6.30 p.m. at uh, Merle Green Stadium there in Bryan. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? And thank um, you. Uh, 
th thank you to our uh, our cited source on that. We sincerely appreciate that. I, I kind of anticipated that'd be in that area, that college, the um, Ryan College Station. That'd probably be the, like I said, the new halfway for both teams. Um, actually, I think we got to play on that field. One of my club teams back a few years ago. It's a turf field. It's a nice, nice facility. Like I said, like I said, I still think like I said Brandon Griff has the edge on that game, and should you know should advance to the final. Okay, good. I just want to throw that out there. So that's updated information. Again, the six uh, A, six A Region Three, Region Four uh, girls final girls uh, semifinal between uh, Houston Memorial and Austin Vandegrift will take place. Is scheduled for Tuesday, April thirteenth. 6.30 p.m., Merle Green Stadium there in Bryan. So, uh, okay, so we go back to we were just wrapping up 4A boys and now. So we get to 5A, Coach. So our Region 1 and Region 2 champions, um, it cannot be, and I say this, of course, I'm being completely uh, objective, uh, at, but not, I guess, biased a little bit, but uh, it wouldn't make for a uh, – a state tournament without a team from El Paso, right? So we have El Paso del Valle, the runner up out of the uh, highly touted district two, five, a here um, versus uh, Wakeland uh, state power. They're like, they have reservations there. What seems like almost every year they are the, um, the champion out of nine, six, a so El Paso del Valle versus uh, Frisco Wakeland. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think this is a re I think this is a rematch, right, from a state championship not too long ago. I think, yeah, it, I don't know if it was in was it 2013. I'm trying to think. I'd have to look at look it mm -hmm. back up, but yeah, yeah, and no, no. The last time the last time Del Valle made it to the state tournament was 2013, where okay. where they lost in I believe the state championship, and yeah. I just have to confirm that I, I think that was Wakeland. I think that's what you're referring to, but mm -hmm. I'd have to I'd have to verify that. Yeah, this is an interesting matchup. The one thing that's different this year, this is not going to be in Georgetown. Right. So Wakeland's really going to have to travel, and it's going to have to travel out west, whether Lubbock or the Midland or San Angelo. You know, they are they had the comfort of playing all pretty much all their games nearby, I guess except for this last one when they play Longview and Sulphur, you know, Sulphur Springs. But now you're gonna have to make a trip out west, and so far some of those teams on the rough truck list haven't done so well doing out what playing out west. You know there've been some upsets. So yeah. Del Valle has knocked off some great teams. They knocked off a really good Colville Heritage team that won District Six. Um, like I said, Wakeland's a District Nine winner. This mm -hmm. this this could have been a, a state championship game right here in any other year. If it had the different brackets and so forth. So depending on the game, I don't know if the, the details are out or not. I, like I said, I'm going to give the edge a little bit to Wakeland, but, you know, I could smell an upset here. I, I think I think Del Valley is really to – Del Valle is ready to, um, to prove that, hey, you know, knocking off Colleyville was, was not a fluke. So we're going to knock off another Dallas team, so – I mean, I, I could smell it upset here, but I'm going to give, like I said, the edge because they are the favorites of Wakeland, you know, advancing to the final. Yeah, this has the makings of, you know, you talk about you talk about two teams that are very familiar, very comfortable with being here. You talk about two well-coached teams, mm -hmm. two teams with coaches. You know, Bruce Reichman, the uh, legendary coach there for Del Valle, this is his eighth time uh, making – if I'm if – you know, if I if I research that correctly, this is his eighth time advancing to the state tournament. So, um, and of course, having two state titles as well under his belt. So, um, so yeah, I think it's going to be a matter. This game could be uh, who maybe who blinks first, and also, you know, the the X factor in this. I think you hit on a great point: is where is this game going to be played, right? Mm -hmm. um, where is it going to be played? Is it, you know, we've kind of come to the conclusion that it's mo more than likely going to be one of four locations being uh, Friendship, Lubbock, Midland, uh, or possibly San Angelo with, um, I don't know, the only other possible X factor I think that you could throw in there or variable, I should say, is maybe Abilene, maybe, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Or Brownwood. Um, 
Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start getting past Abilene, then you're definitely talking about uh, Ad- advantage Wakeland probably. So, um, so yeah, so this, uh, so be a great matchup. So you have, you have Wakeland advancing there. And then when we go to five, a regions, three and four are three and four champions. You have the, uh, the uh, district champion out of 25, a Kingwood park taking on uh, the boys out of the Valley in uh, the district champions out of 31, five, a in Valley view. What do you think? Uh, well, if you look at the semifinal or the, the regional final game, I mean, Kingwood Park put a, a beat down on, on Hendrickson. And and then we thought and Hendrickson was that one team that people were scared of. There were no flew under the radar. They were knocking off some really good teams. And and we it's like I think Kingwood Park said ah, we, we, enough of this. We're going to flex our muscle. And I think they made they made a statement putting six goals on them. Um, so I think Valley View, like I said, I think they, they got lucky with this last game against Porter. Like I mentioned, Porter was the better team, um, for that game. Um, uh, this is going to be, this is an interesting matchup. Like I said, we don't know. I don't know if that's already details for that game's already out. Um, kind of my calculations, this game could be in Corpus. This game could be in San Antonio or it can be in Victoria. Um, but I'm gonna give the edge to Kingwood Park. I think you know that I think they have to be a little better, more technical. Um, they got you know the tradition. Not saying that Valley doesn't have the tradition they do, but I think they're more battle. I think Kingwood Park's a little bit more battle tested, you know, because like I said, a lot of the a lot of the times, La Valley teams do go out play these Houston tournaments or the season. They didn't get the chance to do it this year, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give the edge to Kingwood Park. Uh, right. Going into the final, I think like versus Wake, which is going to be probably going to be one of a really good final versus Wake Wakeland. Yeah, yeah, Hendrickson. It it pains me to see them see them bow out uh, in that regional final, just because. <clears throat> excuse me. I think you know I had mentioned on uh, Wednesday's show on the SA Soccer mm-hmm. Roundtable that uh, they were kind of my, I don't know. Dark Horse or Cinderella, which are probably maybe more so Dark Horse because I know they were also the uh, the champion out of 18 5A, but uh, they were <laughs> they were the team, the Dark Horse that I was really, of all my Dark Horses, that I was really pulling for um, just because it's so awesome to watch when, when teams are making history, right, for their programs, for their schools, and they're in the middle of, you know, enjoying a legendary run, having the most successful season in program history. So, um, so a little biased there, obviously, but no, I think kudos to Kingwood Park for, uh, with, for an emphatic 6-2 win. Um, uh, so that sets up Kingwood Park. All right. I actually have some views on that game, um. Oh yeah, breaking, well, some news here for the Valley View Kingwood Park game. It's actually going to be here in my backyard. At Dove here, at Dove, here at Dove Ferris Stadium. Nice. At seven o'clock on Tuesday night, so I'm probably going to be there. I'm probably live streaming on on our on our Facebook page, and I'm I'm going to be psyched watching this game because, like I said, there I want to see how good Dick Kingwood Park is. I want to see how what Valley you can do. So so just some, just check right now. Um, actually, it's going to be on the Texan Live too. So if anybody's going to watch what live stream, will be on Texan Live on Tuesday night at seven p.m. Seven seven p.m. Seven p.m. at Dub Ferris Athletic Complex. Uh, okay, you're on six hundred four in Hasselman here in San Antonio. All right, so uh, there you go, folks. So that'll so you heard it here first. Uh, so the Region Three and Region Four Five A. Uh, state uh, semifinal between Kingwood Park and Valley View will take place uh, Tuesday, April 13th, 7 p.m. there at uh, Dub Ferris Athletic Complex there in San Antonio, Texas. So uh, kudos there. Kudos to Coach Rafa for getting that out there as well. Uh, So that sets up Kingwood Park. Um, You're liking Kingwood Park versus Wakeland for all the marbles and 5A boys. What do you uh, you think? this, This game can go either way. Like I said, I mean, Kingwood Park's been in the finals. Wakeland's got state titles. It's the that Houston Dallas matchup of quality of quality players, quality programs, and but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give the edge to, to Wakeland because they've been there, they've won it recently. Um, so, but this is gonna be an instant, another instant classic for a five A boys soccer final. Like I said, I, I can see, I could literally see this game going to 
either overtime or PKs. But I think I'm going to give the edge to, to Wakeland on this. How do you think this game ultimately plays out, though? I mean, what 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 do you see the most likely probability? If if Wakeland can get on board early, because uh, you know, and seeing that they struggled a little bit with Longview, you know, he, I, I think you know Longview is like just not to put them down. It's like I don't think they're a qual- as far as quality team as Kingwood Park. You know, you keep Kingwood Park, you know. In the game, like if it stays zero zero, you know that one little mistake can cost you. And Kingwood Park is just as organized to, you know, to defend that one zero lead. So it's very, I think it's very important that Wakeland plays their style, gets be aggressive, and gets that first goal to set the tone of the game, and have and have Kingwood kind of play from catch up. I think that's the way Wakeland has done with some of these other teams. And, but especially with this team, this you know high caliber team, you're gonna have to put your style of play and be the aggressor and not kind of you know playing cautiously. You know, you get you got you know because if not, this could come back and bite you in the butt and you know you end up losing on a game on a on a mistake or on PKs or an over, like overtime or PKs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Inter- yeah. It's. Well said. Um, that will be that'll be a <laughs> that'll be a great matchup. Um, all right, coach. So we move on now. Uh, again, uh, for our listeners, there you can see it down on the bottom. Uh, Kingwood Park versus Valley Views uh, slated for Tuesday, April thirteenth, seven p.m. at Dub Ferris Athletic Complex there in San Antonio. So, all right, coach. So we move on to six A. So our final uh, final classification, final group here uh, between the boys and girls. Uh, so region one versus region two champions, you have, uh, Allen, uh, the runner up out of, uh, five, six, a versus Mm -hmm. the third place team, (laughs) all right. Third place team out of, uh, 10, six, a rock wall Heath. This game is slated for also Tuesday, April 13th, 6 PM at uh, Mesquite Memorial stadium. Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? This will be an interesting matchup. I know Allen's. Flying high, knock, uh, knocking off East Lake, but same same thing. You can say the same thing with Heath because they knocked off a quality Bridgeland team from the Houston area, um, and just because they're a third place team, you cannot take them lightly. And I, I think Allen, I, I think Allen's prepared for this game. I think Allen will win this, but it's like I said, it will be close. But Allen, Allen should advance to the final. Uh, you know, after Tuesday night. All right, so you see Ellen advancing here. Okay, so this is this is the one I just really um, I think it's going to make for a great matchup, but I think it's also it's the one where you see two teams that very few people expected to see here, mm-hmm. right? So, and that's not a knock on either program whatsoever. I just think the the road that these two teams have taken to get here and who they've defeated it just it says a lot. Uh, it says a lot about those both of those teams. And again peaking at the right time, playing at the right time, getting hot at the right time. So uh, kudos to both of them should make for a great matchup. And then we have, so we have uh, regions are region three and region four champions. Uh, you have Jersey village. Uh, they are the uh, champion out of 17, six a versus a team that we all know in uh, champion out of 28, six a in Lee. What, uh, how does this one play out? Uh, this is this is a good matchup here. Not too familiar with um, with Jersey Village, but you know they've beaten some quality teams. You know they beat a really good Tompkins team. You know top, even though Tompkins finished fourth in their district, but if there were any any other district, there would probably be a district champ. That's just how tough that District 19 six A is. It's it's a playoff game every 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 game. So right. and. So kudos to the Topkins program. I know they lost a heartbreaker in the shootout. Um, so this is a bit very interesting matchup. I think this this game is going to be played at at Georgetown, actually the the Reckenbach Field. So they want to get a little feel already of the state championship feel of the game. Right, it's right. going to be probably that atmosphere. Um, so going into this game versus Lee. Um, 
it, it's it's a, it's a good matchup. I know I'm kind of looking through some of the teams that um, you know that Jer- uh, Jersey Villas has beaten. Uh, they beat you know knocking off Cinco Ranch is a good win. They knock off a Alif Elsick team that's one state, um, but I think in the end. That big win the the last night the league had against Lake Travis, getting that monkey off their back as far as the PKs, it's a confidence booster, uh, and you can tell this team's on a mission for re- redemption after losing that that final with uh, with Flower Mound and not having the opportunity to get to because I think last year's team was just as good, you know, to get to that final. So I'm gonna pick Lee over Jersey Village. I know this game's gonna be like I said, it's in Georgetown. Um, so Lee always travels well. They have a good crowd always goes in. I'm sure, like I said, they'll get them, give them the momentum to go into the final versus, um, versus Allen. Okay, good. So that sets up a matchup there. Um, Allen versus Lee. Uh, so the team, you know, the, the kind of surprise team out of 6A, you know, biggest, you know, also the biggest, uh, biggest school in the state versus, the team on uh, on the on a mission that would make for the I guess the ultimate redemption story, uh, the season of, of redemption, if you will. Um, two years in the making, obviously, since they didn't get to uh, prove it, you know, win it out last year. Mm-hmm. Um, what are what are your thoughts? Uh, like I said, this is this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, two teams that have a lot of really great technical play. Uh, great coaches. Um, I mean, just the talent from both teams is just, you know, they kind of cancel each other out. I know, I know, I know where we're looking for, hopefully seeing like maybe in an East Lake versus league. Cause they do kind of mirror each other. I think this team's kind of also mirror each other a little bit too. Uh, I think in the end, you know, I know, the, I know Allen's comes from, you know, Good quality programs. They've been some quality teams, but I think Lee has that chip on his shoulder. When you have that chip on his shoulder, that and that bad taste in your mouth from from years ago, you know you're gonna go in there and take care of business. And I think Lee's gonna bring back a, a state championship here to the San Antonio against uh, against Allen. This is gonna be a close game, but I think uh, Lee finds a way to, and bring and wins the championship. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be uh, that would make for a great uh, a great story, right? Just because you also obviously there are um, uh, many kids on that on this team, many uh, young men on this team, this Lee team that are now seniors that were you know they were on that team two years ago that came up short uh, versus Flower Mound uh, that it was in the state title game came down to penalties. Uh, so yeah, nothing. Uh, I know nothing. Um, you know they're. Their uh, hashtag, their refuse to lose, their motto, refuse to lose, is kind of been their defining. It's been their mantra this year, and you know, and they also had the opportunity along the way in on this uh, this title this title run or attempt at a title run in the playoffs at uh, you know redeeming the only loss that they've had uh, they've had since that state title game two years ago uh, in Vandegrift. So um, so yeah, I think it'll make for. A, It'll make for a great story if they're able to seal it. So good luck to them. You know, good luck to all of our teams, all classifications, both on the boys and girls side. Um, I think it's going to make for a great, uh, great state uh, state tournament. I think the last thing we kind of wanted to talk about is the the elephant in the room being that hey, they're not playing both of these games. They're at Berkelbach, you know, Berkelbach Field in Georgetown, back to back days. Um, there'll be two different locations. You'll have the state state semifinals taking place on Tuesday at neutral site locations. And then the winners will advance to the state title game, uh, on Friday versus, uh, at there at Berkelbach field in Georgetown. So, um, how do you think some, it's obviously less of a factor, maybe more than others, but how do you think, how does that ultimately play a factor in the tournament, in the state tournament period, I, I think the big thing is like, when, in the past, you would have to do a quick turnaround. You got to play that when you you win the semi. Like uh, when we have the normal tournament, we usually have games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Like if you were if you're the four A, you played your final on Friday, Friday evening, so you had a quick turnaround. And 
here you have a couple of days. I know the girls are playing Friday and the boys are playing Saturday, excuse me, on Saturday. So right. you have time to, you have time to recover. So that's probably an advantage, but the disadvantage is, is not be able to scout your team. Normally when you're at a state tournament, you're, you know, you watch right. the other team play, you know, the night before and then now you have a game plan. This, this here, you don't have that luxury. So you're going to go in, to a state semi, uh, state final game, uh, really kind of t- feeling each other out. Unless you have you have a staff that you can send someone to go scout for you, you know, which I'm sure they might may have. But this 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 is going to be a little more a little more tricky, you know, going to a state final, just trying to fill in you out because you won't have your players that watch the other team play and vice versa. So, you know, the advantage you get some rest, but the disadvantage is not knowing, not seeing your opponent the day before or the night or, or the or a couple of days before we're right. going into the final game. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. You talk about being able to scout, you know, scout your potential opponent. But, you know, I think that's why, um, you know, we thank the soccer gods. That's why God invented assistant coaches. Right. So. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully I, I think, you know, it's a great point in terms of the the I guess the recovery time that'll be between the state semifinal and the finals. Um, Cause I know usually often what's often the case, if you've played in enough tournaments is the, the semifinals are incredible matchups and it's kind of uh, Hey, we're all in here cause we're trying to get into the final. And then the finals can oftentimes be, you know, the legs are heavy. The teams mm-hmm. are spent. They're emotionally spent. They're mentally drained. And they just some they oftentimes don't make for a final that's worthy of a final. You know, it's no knock on on any of the teams. It's just how it kind of plays out sometimes. So I think this, because of how they're playing it this year, I think I think we're going to be in line for some some fantastic state championship uh, games, regardless of how the matchups take place um, or who's playing who. I should say, but uh, but yeah, I think it'll be. It'll be phenomenal. That's a great point with the scouting, but I think, uh, you know, I think uh, that was one of the discussions that was floating around on Twitter last night and this and earlier this morning was because there was no, you know, you saw that in the regional, uh, in the mm-hmm. regional, layout, regional quote unquote regional tournament, right, with the semifinal and the final, how much attendance was up because the games were separate, right? So, um, in separate locations, it was, you know, it was kind of less travel, I guess, if you will, for, for many teams, many, you know, many communities. Um, so I don't know, I think that might be something that the UIL has to keep in mind, um, for, you know, for the next coming next few seasons in terms of how they play out this, uh, the, the tournament. I think they need to tweak it a bit as far as I think they should have the games every weekend. I like to see that format. That way, it gives teams a you know, because this format, the way they did it, to do a regional semifinal on a Friday or Saturday, then a quick turnaround Monday, Monday and Tuesday. There wasn't really much enough time to kind of to recuperate, you know. And I think that's one you know, there's like an advantage and disadvantage of the both, you know, for uh, with that. But I, I like to. I think what's, there was one uh, comment I did read on Twitter that they wish that they had the state semifinals just this weekend, this coming weekend, and then the final of the following week have an extra week, which I think that I think that scenario is probably a lot better, you know, and you know just a better, more recovery time and more preparation time too, you know, right. to go into the to the finals to the final game. And like I said, maybe people more be able to go more to those games as well, too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, another thing that's worth mentioning, I think, too, for UIL is, you know, kudos to them because they were obviously they were working behind the scenes. They were committed to make sure that um, that we were going to get in a soccer season and that we were going to see it out uh, as best as we could. And also, I mean, if anything, I think a lot of people forget this was the earliest it might have been ever the earliest a uh, UIL soccer season had ever started. A uh, official mm-hmm. start date where games went go went live was uh I believe, excuse me, December twenty eighth, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And I don't ever remember that a season starting before, you know, 
uh, January 1st. So, um, so kudos, you know, kudos to them. I kind of mention it in every episode that we've had so far is that, you know, grateful and thankful that we're here, right. Uh, that we've made it to this point. And now that we finish out strong, now that we finish out our 4A, 5A and 6A seasons on both sides, that we finish them strong. Um, and that are, of course, our, our spectators, that they're safe, that they travel safely and that they're smart. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, we wish everybody the best of luck. We wish all the teams that made it to the tournament, uh, that made it to the state playoffs, congratulations. Obviously, you know, in the end, there can only be one. So, you know, everybody, everyone else inevitably gets eliminated. Uh, but uh, to make the playoffs, let, to compete this season, let alone to make the playoffs, it just says a lot about, you know, our, our sport in this state. It says a lot about our coaches, the commitment from our coaches, the commitment from our student athletes, because there was a lot more sacrifices this year from them, from parents, from coaches, from administrators, you know, from communities. So, you know, f f to all of those, you know, all of those people that I just mentioned, thank you. Uh, and uh, we got one more, basically one more week, right? One more week in the season. So uh, we're excited. And by th essentially by this time next week, we will have all our state champions crowned. So, um, and then, so yeah, that puts us, you know, we segue to that is we will have one more wrap up show that will uh, either most likely come on next Sunday. Uh, so be, uh, be, you know, tuning in for that. We'll get info, info out on that. Uh, Coach Rafa, any, uh, any final words, final thoughts, any plugs, anything uh, dealing with uh, just the season, the playoffs, mm -hmm. and also SA soccer round table this, this coming week. I'm just glad that like I said the season was able to be played. I know in the beginnings we had some rough patches with some teams battling COVID, and that that was the scary part right there because we weren't because of it. last year they didn't get to play the playoffs. You know this year, you know there were some teams that did have cases and it did affect them early on, or even there are some that did affect them th during district play. And I think the biggest worry is like, are we going to have teams dropping out because of COVID? And, you know, having bias, kind of the similar situation will happen with football in the fall. But we haven't had that case. We're glad that we're in the, 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 the teams and the players and the coaches, you know, like I said, they're all being responsible to, you know, that way we play these games and we're actually going to complete the season on Saturday. And so that's, that's kudos for everyone out there. And like I said, good luck to all the teams that are in the, the made of the state tournament. You know, we, all the hard work, it's you know it's paid off to get you to this point and that's something to be proud of and you know and you know good luck like i said good luck to them and safe on you know safe safe travels and then um i know monday like i said i'll be on the round table we'll be discussing uh, some of the the regional uh, finals for especially for our, our area region four and also some some word uh some information about F safc i think they're playing the the austin fc today a little classical, the little thirty-five classical. Yeah, is that still, was that live? Was that on right now? I don't think it was live today. I wish it was. No, uh, no, but I mean, yeah. it was. I mean, I know they weren't airing it, but was that? That's is that's not ongoing right now, is it? Did that? I think finish? it was ongoing today. I think it's for, it should already be finished already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, so you're well, probably seeing Harry tweet. Harry's one of the members of this round table. <laughs> He's probably tweeting on there about the scores and so forth. So yeah, check us out, and I think I think Wednesday we might be, might be doing, I think uh 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 the show the state championship show. What do you think is gonna take bring back the the hardware back to their high school and and then make our predictions there. Nice, yeah, and yeah, special shout out to Harry. Uh, Harry, who's also the uh, the co-host with Coach Drafa on uh, the SA Soccer Roundtable, and you can find him on on Twitter at R A M I N C O L. That's Ram and Cole R A M I N C O L, short for Ram in Colorado. Uh, he's been he's been great. He's been uh, done a lot of the uh, behind the scenes stuff in terms of kind of our, our joint venture, our collaboration, our partnership here with uh, the Fifty Fifty Podcast and SA Soccer Roundtable mm -hmm. and. Uh, getting scores to us, updating us on different things. And, uh, he does tremendous work. Uh, I know he, he covers a lot of the, uh, lower league, uh, pro, uh, pro, you know, the pro leagues, uh, USL, USL and below. He does a lot of tremendous work, um, has a separate podcast too, right? Is that, is it United? 
Soccer FC, is it? Or I, I can't. I think, I gotta, I think you know the Soccer FC. Yeah, yeah. So check that out if you can. Again, I think that's, uh, I believe that is United Soccer FC. You can find it on all uh, all major podcast platforms. Uh, final plug, final words from me. I uh, just want to remind uh, remind folks a couple things. I often get the questions of, hey, where can we find the podcast? Again, the podcast, we are a member of the uh, A Day in the Life TV network. So you can find us by searching any other major podcast platforms. You can find us, just search uh, search A Day in the Life colon unplugged, and that's where you'll find the podcast. Look for the 5050 podcast. Again, that's A Day in the Life colon unplugged, and you'll find the 5050 podcast there. Uh, also, obviously, when we do live shows, you can find us here on Twitter through Periscope uh, or whatever it is now. I think it's still Periscope, right? Uh, I think they got. I think Periscope moved over to Twitter now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can find us live here on Twitter, but then you can also find this archived version. We are now on YouTube. Okay, so now on YouTube, uh, still a uh, still under construction, but uh, you can find us there at. Uh, the 50 underscore 50 podcast. Again, that's uh, the 50 underscore 50 podcast. Um, so yeah, we're on YouTube. You'll find an archived uh, version, archived edition of this episode. All, all our live episodes will be uh, directed there to, to YouTube as well. And then uh, just a reminder also, because I've gotten questions on this and people were unclear from previous episodes that uh, both uh, myself and the 5050 podcast, we are uh, we'll be leaving during the summer. We, we will be uh, leaving the, uh, the great city of El Paso and we're headed uh, to San Antonio. So uh, looking forward to that a uh, little more, uh, more joint partnerships and collaborations with uh, SA soccer round table and excited to be going to the South South slash South central uh, uh, Centex area uh, area of Texas. So uh Near and dear to my heart, still be covering El Paso, still be doing a lot of things here as well. But ultimately, we're reaching out across the state. So thank you to, uh, to all our listeners, all our continued supporters. Thank you, Coach Rafa, for your time today. And uh, remember, uh, keep supporting us, the likes, you know, tagging us on everything. Until the next time, keep downloading and keep listening. <laughs>